Welcome everyone to today's episode of Getting In a College Coach Conversation. I'm Sally Ganga from College Coach. I hope you're doing as well as possible and staying safely away from other people. Um, and as you research colleges, remember that most of it can be done online. I know it's not ideal, but really you'd be surprised at how much can be done online. All right, so on to the show today. For our second segment, Lori Peltier, College Coach college finance consultant, will be discussing why colleges are not communicating with you about your student. In other words, FERPA. If you don't know what that stands for, don't worry, Lori will explain. And for our third segment, I'll be asking Joy Biscornet, college coach educator and veteran of even more admission offices than I am, Lafayette College, Boston College, University of Illinois, or sinus. Um, however, today we'll be talking to her about her personal college experience, which was at Lafayette. Um, and what it was like studying engineering at a liberal arts college and why she chose that over a large university or a tech school. Um, but first, I will be welcoming Tova Tolman, who's right here on the screen, um, college coach veteran, formerly of Barnard College, Montclair University in New Jersey, and Fordham University in New York. She and I will be discussing how to make the most out of your common application activity list. Welcome, Tova. Thanks, Sally. Fun to be here, as always. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is one of those very practical topics that kind of seems like it would be easy, but then I talk to families and, you know, it's not. Like, they do things like ninth grade is at the top and, you know, um, things that when I ask them, was this your most important activity? They're like, no, it's that one I put down in number 10, you know, that kind of thing. So, Why so is that listed as number one then? Yeah, exactly. You know, so... Um, well, let's, but let's begin at the beginning. What kinds of things actually belong on the list? Let's start there. Everything. <laughs> this is really, I think, one of the things that I see students missing. Easy opportunities here. I'll see, I'll chat with a student, they list maybe two sports and that's it. And I'm like, that's wonderful. Sports are very time consuming. It's quite possible that takes up all of your time. But it's, you also listed, you only spend about three hours a week in this sport, maybe four in that sport. How do you account for the rest of your time? What do you, would you mm -hmm. just kind of like hang out and read the rest of your day? Oh no, I'm also really involved in my local church. And actually it's my responsibility to pick up my third grade little sister after school every day, take her to her soccer practice, help her with her homework um, and get dinner started before my parents get home. That belongs on the list. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, colleges are just trying to understand how you spend your time. So if, if it's some sort of structured anything that's happening outside of school, it matters too. It doesn't just have to be a school sanctioned activity. Any sort of community based activity, family responsibility is one of the drop down options. That's what they mean. They mm -hmm. probably don't mean something like my daily taking out the trash and making my bed responsibility. Like right. that's just kind of part of living and, you know, being a, a member of a household, but something above and beyond like a real commitment, it belongs on the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recently had a discussion with a family where, um, unfortunately, the father had a, a stroke and he was rehabilitating, but the kids were helping him. He needed help and the mom had to work and this was not a time to lose health insurance. So, you know, the kids were spending at least a couple hours every day um, to help him with his, you know, physical therapy and whatnot. I was said, absolutely, the colleges want to know about that. That is a major responsibility and that is as important as Glee Club or whatever else you sure. might want to be mentioning. So I just always like to emphasize that. That being said, I don't know how you feel about like a student who kind of like strums guitar from time to time in his room by himself and doesn't play in a band or anything. I mean, would you would you advise a student to list that? In all honesty, with that, I usually say only if you've really got nothing else. It depends on how engaged or committed the student is to the hobby. Mm -hmm. So if you're, like you said, exactly that, oh yeah, I have a guitar, I sometimes strum it, no. Probably not. But mm -hmm. if your hobby is a legit hobby where, where you take that guitar and three times a week you have band practice with your friends and it's you, mm -hmm. you don't think it counts because it's just you and three buddies in a band, but you actually are kind of on your own through computers putting together your, your, your album. I'm using air quotes. I'm being so condescending to these poor kids. <laughs> they're putting together an album. They're practicing. They're rehearsing. They're writing their songs. That counts. That's a legitimate hobby. Maybe 
You have a student who loves fishing and they started making their own fishing lures. Maybe their family travels a lot and travel doesn't necessarily count, but the student submits their photography to a travel blog and writes and is a regular contributor to a travel blog. You know, that counts. If it's a well-formed hobby with a legit commitment that is showing sort of deep invested time and uh, impact or you're creating, you're doing with some sort of regular regularity, I'd say that that can go on there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, one of the kind of key things that I say to students is, is this being shared with other people? Like, let's say you're a creative writer. Um, you know, you'd probably put that down regardless, but it's going to be even better if you're sharing this with other people, if you're part of the literary magazine, or even if you're part of an online group, something like that. Right. And then, yeah, with the guitar, like a garage band counts too. It doesn't have to be orchestra. It doesn't right. have to be something super formal. Um, so, okay, it sounds like we're in agreement on this. But in general, like, part of the reason I make those distinctions is because sometimes students run out of room and then they're like, well, what do I list? So you, you are going to have to make kind of some evaluations there. But you know, if you have room to just put down that you play the guitar at the bottom, that's okay. I mean, that's what yeah. I would say, as long as it's not taking space away right. from something, something else. that's more meaty, that something has greater impact. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, just kind of be aware of the noise. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like extra noise, you know, you want to not be like the level of your amp, but you know, right. <laughs> exactly. But just yeah, like know that sometimes things that are less important can sort of detract from the things that are very, very important. So, mm -hmm. um, and so I mentioned the order briefly as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, let's talk about that some more because I think that is really challenging for students uh, sure. and parents. Yeah. I think what happens is they start to get in the guessing game of exactly what you're talking about. You're saying, you know, certain things are really important and really valuable. Don't replace it with noise. And then students sometimes try and play the guessing game of like, oh, colleges really care about X. I'm going to put that at the top of the list. Please put at the top of the list what's most important to you, what takes up your most amount of time for the most amount of years. That one time volunteer thing you did for an hour in ninth grade does not belong at the top of your list. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes students think like, oh, it's really cool that I, that I worked in a lab. Colleges love to see research. Well, you did it once in 10th grade for a week. Mm -hmm. Does that belong at your top of your list? That thing that you're committed to that you do four days a week for like 40 weeks of the year at like, you know, 20 hours a week that belongs at the top of your list. So mm -hmm. order it based on what's most important to you. What are you proudest of? What takes up most of your time? Hopefully those are the three, those three things are the same thing. Hopefully the thing that takes mm -hmm. up most of your time is the thing that you're proudest of and the thing that's most important to you. And then it's easy. That goes at the top of your list. And then descending based on importance, on frequency, on level, as you're saying, of impact. How many other people is it touching? What is the commitment? How much time is it taking up? How many years have you been doing it? Uh, you might find you have seven things and that's, that's full and you've nothing else to add and that's great. You might find you have 15 things and you're trying to decide how to prioritize. The bottom of the list is the stuff that you haven't done since ninth or 10th grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I always try and tell students too to think, think about where you've had the biggest impact. That's one of the ways to, to prioritize. Like I run into families that, that think that an internship is a requirement. And so, yeah, they think that ninth grade internship, it was an internship, so it must be more important. And then I ask, well, what did your student do? I mean, let's face it, most ninth graders aren't up to doing that much other than photocopying. And I mean, there are exceptions, but you know, whereas this thing in 11th grade that was just volunteering is where they actually like, you know, they taught groups of, they developed curriculum and taught um, groups of middle school students, which frankly, I think is pretty challenging. Teaching middle school students is really hard. So, you know, that's actually probably the thing that goes at the top. So also like, don't just think about the title. Think about, yeah, like what was impactful. Um, as well. What was actually harder to do? What did you accomplish during that? And if it was mostly making coffee and making copies, then, you know, probably not that you can't list it, but that's going to be less important than a place where you were more active. Right. So, yeah. All right. And then what about um, how do students describe things? I see pretty often students writing, 
I did this, I did that. And I'm like, you don't need to use full sentences. No. <laughs> you have so few you characters. You get 150 characters. Don't waste them on proper grammar even. Honestly, I'm okay with abbreviations. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with you not spelling out numbers under 10. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> um, so yeah, I would also not waste space on obvious things. You're on the soccer team. I assume you go to practice and compete in games. Mm -hmm. You don't need to tell me that. I want to hear how you impact the team. You're the one they can count on for smiles. You mentor the, the young players. You lead drills. You do the scheduling for the coach. You know, what does it mean to be the captain of the team? And I think that you can get a lot of, a lot packed in to not a huge amount of space if you're pithy, concise, and get creative. You can even show some personality there. Mm hmm yeah, absolutely. But remember, but for me, I always want to think first and foremost, get that information across. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ab abbreviations, acronyms, whatever it is, as long as it's going to be, you know, as long as it's pretty obvious what it is, mm -hmm. I was always completely fine with that. Um, but if it's not a well-known acronym, don't use it. Mm -hmm. Like everyone, every admission officer across the country knows what NHS is, we know what DECA is, we know what MUN is, and maybe some of our listeners are saying, I, I don't know what those things are, and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's like this obscure acronym that only your high school uses, mm -hmm. you might want to explain, because we might not know, and that, yeah. would, that would be hard. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you're good... not sure if it's like a well-known thing or not, you can ask your guidance counselor. They can tell you if it's a national well-known organization that everybody knows. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing. Is it national? If it's national, like they've heard about it. They know what it is, but if it's just a high school specific thing, you're going to have to spell it out. <laughs> That's just Please. the way it works. If you want us to know what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless, you know, we could just say, oh, I guess they're doing something and we don't know what it is. <laughs> cool. All right. Anything else they can do to uh, maximize the descriptions? Sure. You can actually even get creative with your title. So on, um, on the different platforms, on Common App and Coalition App, you have a drop down for what's the categorization. So let's say you're in the band, uh, you categorize it, it's like music, or I think that's what it is, music instrumental or something like that. And let's say you play the violin, your title could just say orchestra, mm -hmm. or you could say, I'm a, uh, in your title, violinist and high school orchestra and chamber ensemble. Mm -hmm. Now you have, you don't have to waste any of that 150 characters on the description of saying that you're a violinist in the chamber orchestra. That's already in the title. Now you have the rest of the space to explain what is entailed, uh, what is your level of impact to the orchestra and so on. And I think that sometimes you don't have a lot of impact. You know, I, I've had this conversation with students too. Of well, at the at the I, where I volunteer at the hospital, I just kind of do what I'm told. I I've only been there for a year. I don't really have so much, something impressive to share. Oh, and and this is maybe like 201, 301 level of what I'm about to suggest. But you don't have to just say hospital volunteer and then leave it blank. I, I will never forget this example. And again, this is a little extreme, but I thought was showed a lot of personality. The student said, it's never a dull moment at Mass General from developing crafts with students to delivering newspapers. I love serving as a teen volunteer. Mm -hmm. yeah, that fits in 150 characters. Now I'm learning a little bit about the joy the student brings, what they get out of it, that they, something that they particularly have fun with. And I learn a little bit more about the student in, in only one sentence, mm -hmm. uh, even if they haven't done a whole lot with that particular activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a full sentence, if you have room for it, is okay. But I think we, we really agree, don't do the, I did this, I do no. that. Like, yes, please don't. Be no either, full sentences are needed. Yeah. Either if, kind of- Only if you really have nothing else to say. Then right. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Well, even <laughs> then, like, I was kind of like, mm. I don't have a lot of time to read this application. Could you make it quick? Like think about it sort of the way a resume is formatted yeah. where you want Bullets someone. are great. I mean, I think it is really a good idea to think about who your audience is. Um, these are people who, I don't know how much time you had on your applications. I had more at some schools, but boy, mm -hmm. in Chicago, I was reading 40 to 50 applications a day. Some people read more. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you just want to be super efficient basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Any, like anything else? I think you just really think hard about how you spend your time 
And don't leave off something major. I can't tell you how frustrating it was to read in a recommendation letter from the guidance counselor or teacher and learn that the student had a 20 hour a week part-time job at the corner coffee house. And they didn't mention that because they didn't think it counted because it wasn't at school. Think about how you spend your time. Don't leave off things that are crucial and important to you and assume and recognize everything counts. You just want to know how you spend your time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Tova. My pleasure, Sally. Good to see you. All right. So we will be back in just a few minutes uh, with Lori Peltier, um, who will be telling us about FERPA. <laughs>